All right, it's me, Mikey Pipes, back again with Peter Piper. We're working on this ream, four ton, it's got the 48,000 BTU thing right there. This is an R22 system, manufacture date of March, 2007. She's almost as old as Peter, see that? <laughs> so Peter, a machine like this stresses the importance of doing annual service. We haven't been here in, in three years to do service. Number one, we have this little extra capacitor, which was right here, right? Mm -hmm. She's leaking oil, right? This contactor right there, that was replaced three years ago, um, but she's leaking, as you can see right there. Um, the inside, this coil looks brittle, and it, and it is. We have a lot of debris inside there. We have a lot of vegetation yeah. overtaking the area. So one of the things we're going to do, we're going to trim this back, all right? And we're not going to take the old panels off, but we're going to take the top off. We're going to disconnect the, the fan motor wires uh, from the contactor and the capacitor. We're going to clean the inside compartment, as you can see, with a bunch of debris there as well. And uh, we're going to bring this this behemoth of a machine is R22 system back to life. Uh, we do know that it cools. We don't know if it cools well, but I'm not inclined to test refrigerant pressures now uh, because she said she had it. She has, she's had it on for a little bit, you know, on, on those warmer days and it seemed to be working okay for her. So I think that we should be good with refrigerant. Hopefully I'm not, you know, biting myself in, in the, in the, uh, in the tulkas, the ass, you know? So, uh, we're going to start cleaning up this bad boy and get right, showing her. You know, it's only been about 10 minutes, but we got a lot accomplished. Look at it. Um, <laughs> there's a lot going on over there, but what was growing through here is now gone and we have much more better access. Um, just use bare hands and I use my PVC pipe cutter, which is right there. See, keeping it real. Um, we're going to, <laughs> we're gonna rebuild this bad boy. We're gonna bring it back to life. Uh, we're gonna clean out this compartment here. Uh, we have a garbage bag. We're gonna take off the condenser fan motor uh, top piece of the uh, the cabinet. Take that out. We're gonna replace the capacitor. We're gonna put a hard start on here, eliminating the need for the relay and the um, and the other. I guess we want to call this like a hard start relay, but uh, 88 to 106. But it's a four ton. We're gonna replace the the uh, contactor. Sorry, the capacitor with an Amarad. We have one. 65, no, 6010? We got, we got a gazillion of these. We don't have a 6010. Oh. Yeah, we'll have to piggyback them in. Wire them parallel. Okay, let's get showing the road. So I removed my wires for my condenser fan motor, black, brown, and orange. Orange is line one, black is line two, and the, R on the, the brown is my capacitor. Okay, good, almost cut myself right there. Good, and we'll put that off to the side. Perfect. Let's take a closer look at what's going inside. Remove any extra vegetation that's growing inside of here, like that. And take a look at the coil. Let's see. You know, she looks pretty good, actually. Not terrible, surprisingly. But uh, we're going to clean all the vegetation from the bottom of the condenser. All right. So <laughs> our inside looks much better. Take a closer look at our coil. I don't see, other than that corner right there, any visible damage or anything. Take a look at the condition of the outside. Also looking pretty clean as well, surprisingly, with the lack of, of service on this. Um, Peter just cleaned out the compressor and electrical compartment, the bottom, all that debris. Um, this capacitor, this dual capacitor, is actually a, uh, a 6010. And I was gonna put an AMRAD in, but I only have a 65. And uh, so we're going to add a 65, right, we have? Yeah. So we're gonna add a five on top of the five, and that will give us 10. Have no fear, Peter is here. We have a 6010, look at this, the AMRAD 6010 dual capacitor with, does it have the CPT on it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, with, CPT, Compressor <laughs> Protection Terminal. Oh, it's gonna be epic. All right, um, we have our AMRAD capacitor in there. Oh, looks like one of them popped out. Look at that, see? The red popped out of the common. Um, I have my AMRAD dual capacitor there. I have uh, common right there. 
coming from T2, right? I have my CPT terminal occupied by my heart start. I'm using the 5-in-1. The it's 5-in-1? Yeah, 5-in-1 mm -hmm. for 4 to 5 ton systems. Perfect. I secured my relay right there. Uh, that should be pointed in the upwards position. They would like the um, cap capacitor or this hard start to be in the vertical position with the terminals pointing up, but I don't have any room in here for that. So, and I'm not gonna mount it on the side externally from the electrical compartment, so I'm just gonna lay it down the side there. And um, I've had success with that. If any of you have not had good luck with that, let me know in the comment section down below. All right, guys, uh, we're gonna take this out or I can leave it. Yeah, we can leave that. It's not harming. It's not harming anyone. It's totally disconnected. That's the old hard start relay, um, and we already gave it a test fire, uh, and she fired up. So um, let's do a clean. All right. So before we actually get the the chemicals and chemically clean this uh, condensing unit, uh, Peter's using the Milwaukee M18 compact leaf blower. We're getting all the debris out from the inside of the unit. Thing. really does a good job and we'll finish off with the rinse all right so peter's now doing a rinse with just cold water gonna saturate the coil get any loose debris off there and uh you know really saturate any uh, you know caked on debris so it's good to do a good pre-rinse take your time there's no rush all right so now for the cleaning all right we use the Viper. This is the maximum strength venom pack. This is the brightener cleaner. It's non acid, non foaming, it's, and it's good. It's good stuff. So, if there's any way to bring this coil back to some decency and back to life, uh, it's with the Refrigeration Technologies Viper Brightener Maximum Strength Venom Pack. Not a sponsor of the channel, in case you're wondering. But they did send me the foam gun for free. All right, so while we're letting the, the chemical treat the condensing coil we're rinsing the foam gun container um it's best to clean it out after every use you know you foul that thing up you know you're out a hundred bucks you know so clean it out every, every after every use and then, then run it through a cycle on e or or c the setting on the top and uh that way you could just go through the water real quick and uh di you know ha not have a high uh, dilution ratio you want a low ratio very nice all right, time for a little rinsing action. Let's see what kind of dirt we got coming out of here. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Crazy. Wow. It doesn't look that dirty on film, but in, in real life, and that's just the top right there. Uh, I like rinsing from the top down. Uh, if you guys have a different uh, rinsing technique, uh, let me know down in, your, in the comment section down below, guys. I like to, you know, learn something new every day. And if I'm not doing something right, guys, just let me know. Nice, good, clean coil. This is going to have a great, great uh, heat exchanging medium right here. It's going to be awesome. Wow. Look at that. Oh, my God. That is insane. Wow. Wow. Look what, look what happens when you just take your time. You know, yesterday, uh, Peter, I was working on a train uh, XR17, a two-stage 17 sear condenser. It has the spot, you know, the spine uh, looking things on the coil, not like this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we put it in three years ago. It hasn't been touched since then, but I did, a, uh, you know, the coil cleaning on it. And wow, yeah. it didn't look dirty, but wow, look at the bottom close to that. You're worried about yeah, almost towards the bottom, but wow, all that dirt coming out of there. Guys, clean your condensing coils. I can't stress it enough. See? Look at it. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. She wasn't wearing a fur coat, but she's definitely wearing lots and lots of, of dirt up inside her. She was a dirty girl, but now she's clean. All right, my system is running. Let's do a quick check for amperage. I got 11.1 on line one and 11.3 on line two. Let's just check our compressor. Compressor is using 10.1, do the purple 9, and black 10.4. Okay, this is our high pressure switch, manual reset. There's our low pressure switch, uh, I guess automatic reset. <laughs> if it's uh, low pressure, uh, it's off. If it's, if it's not low pressure, it's on. 
this one it hits high pressure, you gotta reset that with that red button right there. Okay. See, it says push to reset. So our amperage is good. Our, our, our dual capacitor by AMRAD, the 6010, is right there. And there's our hard start relay and a uh, cap for that. System is running. Time to test refrigerant pressures. Right, so I have my Testo Smart Probes installed. Uh, take a look at uh, uh, my iPad Mini. And these are my pressures. I have my refrigeration set to R22. Don't forget that. <laughs> uh, you don't see many R22 systems out there still. Uh, but I had it set for R410A and I was like, oh, something's not right here, <laughs> right? Um, you're gonna see that we have 56, almost 57 PSI on our low side. That's okay. We're at, uh, let's see, temperature. We're at 68 degrees. All right, our high side is 143 and slowly climbing. Keep in mind that coil was cold and had probably 55, 60 degree water going across it and she's almost dry again. So our high side pressure, I expect that to climb. Our evaporator, our condensing coil temperatures, um, okay, you know, I'd like to see that a little bit higher, but uh, it's only seven degrees inside the house and 68 outside. Uh, we have 10 degrees of sub uh, superheat and 13 degrees of subcooling. Uh, considering the age and overall condition of the system, I think these numbers are good. Uh, if I'm wrong, let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. There are those numbers. You want to pause, take a look at that, be my guest. Also, check out the Mikey Pipes Philanthropy YouTube channel and please donate to the cause where we provide free or low cost essential home repairs for plumbing, heating, and air conditioning to those in the community who can't afford to make the repairs. All right, guys, this kind of wraps it up. I did as best job as we could, cut away a lot of the vegetation Put in the AMRED dual capacitor, uh, replaced the hard start, and brought this bad boy back to life. Was, and uh, was probably not going to see this again for another three years. And that's one of the primary reasons why I changed the dual capacitor without even checking it. Because I know I'm not going to be back here for three years. So I might as well replace it now and spare her the possible expense for replacing the condenser fan motor. Or worse yet, the, condense, uh, the compressor. Peter? What did you just say? Transform the whole side of the house. We transformed the whole side of the house. Look at that. Uh, because that's not cool. Come on. Uh, that's just going to eat into your your soffit, your your trim, all that. Get working way, its way into the attic. That's not good. So at least around the condenser, it's clean. Uh, I left all the rubbish there for the uh, the landscaper. I'm not landscaper, but I will trim your bushes down for free. Okay, ladies, I'll trim them for free. <laughs>